I welcome you to our Unlock the Power of Email webinar. Super excited to be with you today and to share some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years uh, regarding Outlook email. And my name is Gabrielle Baumeyer. I'm your presenter today. And I am the president and co-founder of Reason to Race. And we're committed to empowering the leaders in the nonprofit and the for-profit sectors to make their community impact. And we do that by providing online fundraising platform services. And so I've worked in the software and web arena for about 20 years. And during that time, I have used Microsoft Outlook. Uh, I've used that for my email management system. And so over time, it's become extremely valuable and useful for me. So I'm here to share with you how you can also maximize your productivity by having your email system work for you and not against you. I do recommend having a pad of paper there available as I give you some tips and tricks. You'll want to note those down. All right, so moving straight into our agenda. So we'll, we're going to talk about five different topics here. And the first topic is pile versus file. It, with, this, with this topic, what we're going to discuss is how you manage the archiving of your emails. And so there are two rules of thought. There's having just one pile, one folder with everything in it, and then there's the rule of thought of having many files where you file your email. I'll share with you what I've done, and I'll give you kind of the pros and cons of uh, how I've done it over years and how it's been really, really useful for me. But again, we're, we're working in Outlook here, and so there's a strategy of pile versus file that we'll go through to hopefully, hopefully give you some facility with how to manage the archiving of your, of your information. Then we'll go into the filter, search, grouping, and sorting uh, topic. And so over the years, I've found it really, really easy to maneuver my emails because of the, mainly because of the searching feature that Outlook has. But there's a way to quickly filter, group, and sort that just makes management of it and maneuvering of your emails really, really simple. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this webinar was because I saw that people just have uh, sometimes difficulty finding what they need. So the whole name of the game with email is to be able to find what you need really quickly. And these features have really, really facilitated my ability to do that. So I'll share those with you. The third topic here is email delay delivery. So there are instances where you might not want to send an email right away to somebody. You might want to delay the delivery of that like by a day or two. So if you're, let's say, working on Saturday and you don't want people to know that you're working on Saturday, you can literally just queue up your emails and do a do not deliver before date option, uh, as I have in the red high, uh, box there. And that email won't go out until you have designated the time for it to be sent out. And so I'll share a couple of other instances where you would want to do that. But it's a really, really useful feature so that you can dictate when your emails go and they don't necessarily go when you hit the send button. The next one, the fourth item here is creating rules. So they, another thing I hear that people, they just deal with this a lot in their email is just having it bombarded with information they don't need. A lot of times they, you know, they get the emails from, I don't know, Starbucks or Panera Bread or AutoZone or <laughs> whoever it might be, and it just fills up their inbox and they just don't need that information there. And what ends up happening is that the more stuff that's in people's email box, the more cluttered it feels, and then the mind gets cluttered. So in this topic, we'll talk about how to remove those emails that you just don't need in your inbox, that don't need to be staring at you, and causing you any kind of uh, anxiety when looking at your email box. The last topic is Email templates, or another way of calling them, and this is what they're calling Outlook, is quick steps. These are ways to create emails that are basically like boilerplates. And, and because it, I don't know how your business is, but in the nature of mine, I do a lot of emailing of the same messages. And so what sometimes people do is if, if today I need to email John what I sent Tommy last week, I'll go to Tommy's last week email and I'll copy and I paste it and then I make a new email to John. Well, that is just too many steps and it takes up too much time because the purpose here is to, to have your email system save you time, not have it be a suck of your time. And so I'll show you how to use email templates in particular quick steps so that those emails that you just 
always need to send over and over again become very quick for you and then over time save you minutes if not hours of your work week and make you as a result more efficient all right so we'll go into the next uh, into our first topic and that is pile versus file so again there are two schools of thought with filing your email and the only reason you'd want to file your emails away and not necessarily delete them is because you might in the off chance want to go back and look at that email. And I have a question coming in on chat. Is this via online or the desktop version as well? Uh, I So Samantha, that's a great question. I'm 99% sure that everything I'm talking about is gonna be on the online version as well. And please don't quote me on that. I use the desktop version. And um, you and I can even talk further about it if you find that one of the features is not there. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's the same. So great question, thanks for asking that. All right, so in terms of pile versus file, two rules of thought. So you wanna file away your emails on the off chance that you might have to go back and look at them someday. Somehow email has become our kind of archive of information. And so what I do, and I said in, in my introduction that I've been using Outlook for 20 years, and so just kind of come up with systems that work for me in it. But what I do is I never, I'm gonna say something radical here, and that is I never delete an email. <laughs> I file everything away. Really the only things I email, so I never say never, are like junk items. If it really is junk that goes into my junk folder, I'll delete those. But if something comes into my inbox, chances are that I want it there. And there might be an off chance, even 0.01% that someday I'll go back and look at it. So my rule of thought is I never delete anything. I only file it in one folder. So I use the left-hand image school of thought, one file folder where I just put everything because I want to spend the least amount of time in my inbox, uh, the least amount of time doing things in my inbox that I just don't need to do. So I don't want to have multiple file folders where I have to literally think, what file folder should I, where, where should I put this email? Should I put it in file folder one or should I put it in file folder two or three? I don't want to have to think about that. So I have one file folder as represented by the left image where I just put everything. And yes, over time, that file folder ends up very large. And I'll talk about what I do with that. But because I put everything in just one folder, I spend a minuscule of time, like such a small amount of time thinking about where to file it, that over time it ends up that I'm just using my time very wisely. And so some people use the multiple file folders uh, for filing their emails, but, and if you're someone who does that, you just might wanna take the case that you just might not need all those file folders. And um, I'll share with you an example of talking to a colleague who said that she does use file folders and she, I don't know, maybe has like eight or 10 file folders and she has maybe one folder for contracts and one for purchase order or one for client one and one for client two. And then so she told me, she goes, yeah, I really, I, I like filing my items, my emails in their own respective folders because then I know everything is where it needs to be. I completely understand that. I like having things where they need to be as well. But then she says to me, but sometimes I misfile them. And then I have to go search. And when I do a search for that contract 101, it ends up searching across all the file folders anyway. So then I asked her, well, then why go to the trouble of filing them? Why take the mental energy to file something in a different folder? If ultimately you've misfiled it, you're gonna just do a search over everything which then leads you back to, why don't you just have one file folder? So again, it's two schools of thought. You can obviously use whichever one is gonna work for you, and I'm just here to tell you some, some ways that I've done it that have really worked for me. So now I'm gonna go over into my email and show you my live email box here. And so you'll see on the left-hand side, I have my uh, gabrielleasonerace.com email here, and I have my inbox. And I have a, just kind of a handful, a little over a dozen file folders here. And so you might be asking, like, hey, wait a second, you just said you don't use file folders. Well, I do use file folders for this reason 
uh, mainly, and that is to have automatic rules put emails in here for me and I don't have to actually file them. So the way my day looks is I come into my email box and I find and I start to you know read what I read and I find, okay, I'm, I'm done with this item. Once I'm done with it, I just put it into this one file folder called R2R 2020. And then I come read my next one and I put it in here and I just might scroll through a little bit. I'm looking for those important items and then I just put them all in this one folder. And I don't have to think, not even a nanosecond, about where to put it. And I don't have to spend the mental energy to try and decide anything. I just put it in one file folder called R2R 2020. So now you'll see I have 65 items in my inbox right now. And so again, I'll just kind of do this, take some out. Now I have 63. Say it's next Wednesday and I want to go back and look for something that I had put away in my file folder, I can, in my one R2R 2020 file folder, I'll come back and I'll look for it by using a search and I'll do that in just a second. And now this file folder here has over 12,000 emails. But that doesn't matter to me because I'm, I'm not looking at this every day. I'm not scrolling through this every day. It's just sitting here in my uh, one file folder, all those items in case I need them one day, maybe. So uh, tell me, I'm going to go back to my image here, but tell me if you have any questions. And again, please take yourself off mute. And if you can't take yourself off mute, let me know and I can unmute you. Uh, and I have a question that came in on the chat here. Why have a file folder at all? Can't you just keep them in your inbox? So you can keep them in your inbox, Ellen. But my question then becomes to you and really to everyone on the, the, the webinar here is, does this, so let's just say this is my inbox, this one file, does looking at a file folder of 12,000 emails, does that kind of, does that do anything to you? Does it give you angst? Some people, it's like they just, every time they look at it, they're like, oh my gosh, I have 12,000 items in there. And it just, they don't even know that it causes them like mental anguish. <laughs> but it does. It would cause me mental anguish. Stress. Yes, Samantha says stress. It's a good word for it. And so for, for me, what I do is if I have something in my inbox, it's because I need to do something with it. So apparently right now I have 63 items in my inbox. I have to do something with these 63 items. So I'm going to go in here every day and do something like I'll address whatever item it is, and then I'll just take it away. And the name of my game is every day have less than 20 items in my inbox. And I know some people, the name of their game is every day you have zero in your inbox. And you can do that too. But I want less than 20 because I know when I have less than 20, there's not this kind of overarching albatross on my back call, I have all this stuff to do. I have less than 20 things to do. Okay, great. And then if it ever gets to be over, you know, 50, 60, 70 emails, then I just kind of stop everything I'm doing and I start addressing those items and getting them out of my inbox. Because for me, if they're not in my inbox, that means they are done. They're either, that I have a calendar item that tells me to do the thing that, you know, John wanted me to do. I have it in my calendar for Saturday at five o'clock or I've, you know, sent the contract to Sally and that email is now done and filed. So, Samantha, uh, so Vanessa overwhelmed. Yeah, that's a good description of it. If you look at an inbox with 12,000 items and then Samantha, you have 18,465. OK, so it, it could be that after the webinar, you start kind of cleaning things out. And I'm going to give you tips on how to clean it out really quickly. But again, it's just two rules of thought. And I found that the piling method just really, really works to save me time in terms of not trying to figure out where to put it. I have everything archived and it's just not deleted. So I don't even have to question, oh, did I delete the thing? Should I delete the thing? Should I not delete the thing? No, I just don't delete it and I just put it in the pile. And then if it is there and I do need it sometime, then I'll go get it. Other questions about pile versus file. And again, please take yourselves off mute. I'd love to, to hear your voices, uh, but chat works well as, um, also. Any other questions about pile versus file? all about creating a space so that you have space in your inbox means space in your mind space to be able to create okay 
But let's move on to the next topic. And now I'll share with you some ways to get all of those emails out of your inbox uh, pretty quickly so that you can put them into your uh, pile uh, if you decide to go that route. So filtering, searching, grouping, and sorting. So again, over time, I have figured out ways to just manipulate and maneuver my emails to get through them quickly because I don't want to spend hours and hours of my day sifting through emails. I don't want to have to spend time looking for stuff. I don't want to have to question where they are, which again lends to the whole, I'm just going to have one, one box where I can go find stuff. Now, something else about my view here, I've flipped back over to the, uh, flip back over to my inbox. You'll notice I have a really simple view of my inbox. It's just one little line here. It doesn't have like a preview line in it. It has the from column, it has the subject, and it has the sent. And that's really all I need. I, I don't need anything else in my columns. And if you wanted to adjust it and have more or fewer columns, you could definitely do that. But I have these th three columns because, again, it gives me a way to easily manipulate my emails. So this is one way I mean. I come into my inbox every morning and I sort by subject. And then I go through and I look and I go, okay, so here's this part of the conversation. Here's this part of the conversation. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I addressed everything. And then here's your first quick tip. So if you have your pad of paper and pen there uh, ready. So I'll look through here and you notice how one item is still unread. Sometimes I'll just kind of highlight the first item, hit the shift key, highlight the second item, and then, or the last item, everything's highlighted. I hit Control Q, and that marks everything unread. Or excuse me, red. Control Q marks it red. And then I say, all right, I'm done with this conversation. I move them over into pile. Same thing here. Okay, virtual introduction. We did that. Okay, got it, got it, got it. I highlight the first one, hit Shift. Highlight the last one, Control Q. They're all marked as red, and then I pull them out into my one pile folder. Same thing here. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. These were just some tests. So I highlight them, control Q, and then they're over in my pile. And now I only have 48 items because I use the sort feature with the subject to just kind of group all the conversations together. And then I also do that with the from field, uh, from category, or excuse me, from column. So I might want to look at, okay, well, here's everything with Selena. Yep, yep, I addressed all that. Highlight them all, move them all over here. Same thing with Darnell. Okay, I needed to set that meeting up. Okay, I got that meeting set up. Go to my calendar, make sure I have a meeting set up for Friday at 1 p.m. We're good to go. And then I pull everything over, and now I only have 41 items. So literally in the matter of seconds, I was able to scan my emails very quickly and then get them out of my inbox. And now I feel just a little bit better that I only have 41 items, which means I only have 41 items to address. And then I'll just kind of keep on going down through that process. And, you know, now I'm happy because now I only have 34 items in my inbox. And then I get really happy when it gets down to 20. And then I know that I'm almost to, I'm almost to my finish line. And so, uh, that's a, a quick and easy way for me to maneuver and manipulate my emails and save myself energy on uh, addressing anything uh, very, very quickly. So questions about that, because I am going to talk about filtering as well, or uh, searching as well. Or has anybody used, kind of used that m maneuvering style? Hi, Debbie, it's Darla. I just wanted to make a quick comment when we I took a very not a, a brief class someone was showing me they had suggested um have you had like your let's say eight folders that you follow in and, and everything their suggestion was you only ever need three files action mm -hmm. read and archive and yeah. so I just want to throw that out there because it's kind of the same thing you've got but that was kind of what we were instructed the other part which you may be addressing is how to get that view because I'm an Outlook novice, how to get that view that you have on your email. Sure, sure. Okay, great. Wonderful. That's great feedback. What were the names of the three folders again? Action, read, and archive. 
Action. And I picked them up and never used them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Action, read, and archive. And so, so in my example, this would be my archive, R2R, right? right? And then this could right. be my action, articles to read. And then action, read, and, and then there's an action. Okay. Archive. Yes. Or action, okay. I don't, I don't see the difference between action and re, and re, uh, action, read, and archive. But, and that might be why you haven't used them. It's kind of like, okay, what's the difference between those two? And let me, <laughs> let me tell you about, so I do have this read folder here. This articles to read. I will maybe go to that once a month. Cause if it's in my articles to read and it wasn't important for me to read it right away, I'm, I might not ever even actually read it. But it's there in case there is one Saturday, but I just kind of am doing nothing. And then I do want to read the articles or I'll come in here and see like, okay, yeah, I do want to, I want to read Janine Blackwell's articles. Okay, fine. But this is like a, a folder that I rarely go to. So my action and my read folder are my inbox. Yeah. Those are really two things for me. If it's in my inbox, I got to do something with it. That's the way I treat it. Thank you for that feedback, yeah. Darla. That's great. And then you asked about how to create this view. It's pretty easy. And all you do is, so up here on subject, if I just right click, I think, and sometimes I don't remember where stuff is, so I pick and choose and, and find it. But under view settings, there's a columns item or columns button. And when you select columns, then you can add whatever whatever you want in the, so let's say, I don't know, I'll just add category. I know I won't use it, but I add category, I hit add, and it puts it over here on the right-hand side. And now these are the columns that are going to be in this order on my inbox. And so when I hit OK, hit OK, now I have categories. Obviously, I don't use categories, so there's nothing in there. And so let's say I say, you know what, never mind, I don't want to use categories, I just, Right click and then remove this column and now it's out. And that's it. But I think I've used this view for 15 to 20 years that I've used Outlook and it's just worked really great for me because I am not a big reader and the less I have on the page, the better. Okay, other questions about uh, this view layout or anything like that? Because the other thing I wanted to show you was, so let's say, Two weeks goes by and I do want to go back to my one pile and I want to find those, I don't know, those newsletters from Canva that I got. So I use the search up here and I find, okay, well, here are all those newsletters on Canva, which is a, oh yeah, this is the one I really wanted to look at. Okay, yeah, it was from January 3rd. It's already been that long. And then I'll just kind of go find whatever I need. Uh, similarly, let's say I'm talking with a uh, one of our nonprofit partners about doing a a fundraiser called movie night and I've already filed all this away because we've had all the discussions and I go gosh I wanted to what was that email about with the movie night it's like oh, oh yeah here okay here it is and then so then I'll go and do a search for movie and then movie obviously is all highlighted in yellow and then I can just kind of really quickly go down and find what that topic was or where that email was and then if I say it was well it was a stream of conversations okay yeah it, here's the original one, or here's the original one here. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what it was. But I didn't have to take a whole lot of time to think about where would it be filed, because it's only going to be filed in one place, in my one file. And as long as I know the person that sent me the email, or if I know the topic of the email for which I'm looking, I can find it. And it's always been that way for me. I had a boss that used to have like 40 different folders over here on the left-hand side. When she couldn't find something, she'd just call me and I would search for it. And in, you know, 30 seconds, I'd be able to find it. And she did it year after year after year after year. She never converted to my one pile uh, method, but <laughs> she, I was always able to help her and get her the information that she needed. Other questions about filtering, searching, grouping. I know we could probably go into a lot of other uh, facets of it. But those are just kind of my my uh, quick ones that I wanted to share with you. All right, so we'll go over into the next topic, and that is email del uh, delay delivery. So with delay delivery, there are 
different reasons you would want to use this. So I gave you one earlier, which is, you know, you might be working on a Saturday and maybe you don't want people to know you're working on a Saturday. And so you can queue up your emails and have them go out at a later time. Uh, another reason you might do it, I was work, talking to a gentleman where he said that he works in a company where everybody's really young and they are, they're all working basically 24 seven. And if he starts to send emails at on Saturday, then people are going to start responding on Saturday. And now he's stuck having to work the rest, kind of quote, having to work the rest of the weekend because now people are, they know that he's online and then they're starting to expect answers from him. And so he queues up his emails to go out on Monday morning so that that, you know, whoever he's emailing, they just think that he, you know, he's off on Saturday and uh, Samantha, that's you. I gotcha. <laughs> You're going to want to pay attention to this session, to this part of the session. Uh, and so he just sends them out on Monday. He queues them all up to go out on Monday morning. Uh, another way I use the delay delivery is with one of my uh, extracurricular activities, I do these uh, what are called training Tuesday tips. And so on Saturday or Sunday, I'll queue up my training Tuesday tips, but they're called training Tuesday because my tips only go out on Tuesdays. And so I'll queue them up and sometimes I queue them up a week in advance. And I say, all right, I don't want them to go out until Tuesday. So I set a delay delivery. And then all of a sudden on Tuesday, all my cohorts get all their little training Tuesday tips. And they think that, you know, I did that at seven o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, which of course I didn't do. I just queued them up for that day. So really, really useful email delay delivery. And you'll see here, I highlighted in red, you can set whatever time you want in terms of day and uh, the time. So uh, you have different features here that you can use. I'm only gonna basically talk about the one that I use, which is in red there. So over here on my inbox, the way you go to the de delay delivery option is you go into, maybe you go into a new email or it might even be a template, uh, and then you set that delay delivery. So here's another quick tip for you that you want to write down on your notepad there, and that is if you're in your inbox like I am now, and on your keyboard you hit Control N for new, that pulls up a new email. Control N. So you're in your inbox, Control N. I'm all about time saving tips. And once I discovered control N, it was like my whole world shifted because now instead of going up here, go file new or where, wherever you do it, or even just going, grabbing my mouse and going up to the top left and hitting new email, that's just way too much time for me. So I just hit control N. I put in whoever the email is going to go to. I type in GAB, hit tab a few times. I hit test, hit, t hit test. And then you'll see over here, where is it, where is it? It's on the options ribbon. Okay, so now you have to click and hit options and then click and hit delay delivery. Now, what I did was instead of having to click options and click delay delivery, I just put the delay delivery option up here in my quick toolbar. And the way you do that is you just simply right click and you say add to add to quick access toolbar. So anytime I do certain functions over and over again, I look to see if there's a way to perform that function with the fewest clicks. Even getting one, rid of one click over time helps. So again, you can either go to options, delay delivery, or if you put it on your to quick toolbar, it's up here. So when you go to delay delivery, it just opens up the screen that I just showed you. And then you can say, do not deliver until, so let's say I want this to go out at 4 p.m. And then I hit close. And now I hit send. Actually, I'm not going to hit send. I'm going to give you another tip. So I could use my mouse and come over here and hit send. Or I can, on my keyboard, hit the, on the bottom left, it's alt, A-L-T, alt, S. And then that email is out the door. Alt, S. So if you, this is what it looks like when you use the control N and alt S in conjunction with each other in terms of time saving. So if I go control N, put in this, hit tab, test, test, alt S, emails out the door. So if you take away anything from this webinar, it's try you, if you're on the desktop solution, again, Samantha, I don't know if this is um, for the online 
one as well is all or control N to create a new email, Alt S to send it out the door. Okay, so Samantha on the chat and everybody can see this. I'm using the desktop version. I have to click on organize, but I can't click on the properties tab. It shows unavailable. Gotcha. Can you turn the computer off using the delay feature? Oh, yeah, that's a good question, Samantha. To get the, to actually have the email go out, the computer does have to be uh, come on. So if you queued out a bunch of stuff to go out on Monday morning, but you had your computer down until Tuesday, they won't go out until Tuesday. Um, they've been afraid to shut down the machine. Yeah, yeah, you do have to manage that, Ellen, uh, is having the, you gotta have the computer up. Now, another version of that is people put stuff in their draft folder and they think it went out and then it just kind of stays in their draft folder for weeks and weeks. And then they get back to the person and say, oh, yeah, oops, it was in draft. So you do have to have your computer on to use the delay feature because uh, they will go out at that. It won't go out before that time. So if at that time the, the computer's not on, it won't go out. Okay, I want to go back to Samantha's question. So I'm using the desktop version. I have to click on Organize, but I can't click on the Properties tab. It shows unavailable. I wonder what that is. You're talking about from here. Uh, Samantha, are you on mute? Okay, can uh, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, so it's, well, I wouldn't say unavailable. It's where, you know, you can't, you can't click on it because the color is different. Like, there's no way you can click on it. Are you in a new email? Oh, I need to be in a new, no, I'm not in a new, I'm just in my inbox. Yeah, you got to be on a new email because you're setting the delivery of an email. So you got to be okay. in the email. And then you go to options and then delay delivery. Okay, then that's again, a little different because when I'm in a new email, I don't even have that option for organ like I don't even have that option to get in. But I think oh, it's because yeah. I'm using yeah. I'll Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. It's got to be someplace. I know there's a okay. mystery call here. Uh, but you get the concept, right? You get the like the structure. Yeah, of it. Yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent. Now it's just a matter of needle in a haystack. Find out where that is. Okay, other questions about – thanks for chiming in on the audio, too. Any other questions about email delay delivery? Uh, and we're going to circle back because these five topics I'm using, they really all inter intertwine with each other. So I will kind of revisit the topic and show you other places where I use it as well. Samantha, I yeah, think I, yeah, Lynn. Is that Lynn? Yes. Can you, can you go back? I was trying to figure out how to unmute. Can you go back to the previous screen where it says have replies sent to? Mm -hmm. Can you explain that a little bit more? Uh, you know, I've never actually used that. And I'm I'm one of those people where I find things because I think to myself, I wonder if you can do this. So if I ever wondered to myself, have replies sent to. Uh, so let's say I'm doing an email to you, Lynn, and I want the your reply to go to my boss, Stephanie. My this is my guess. Okay, this is totally my guess. My guess is that if you check that and you put Stephanie's name in here, that the reply is going to go to her. That's my, it's, but it's my guess. Okay. I would have to go look it up. Outlook has so many features. Okay. So many, so many features. And out of this whole screen, this is the only thing I use because I haven't been curious enough to look at the other features. So, uh, that's, that's a really good one. On my Mac, I have that capability to delay it from send. When I write my email and get it to send, I clip the, I click on the drop down. And yep. then you do the same as you've got there. You just Perfect. delay it until Tuesday o'clock. Yep. It's a schedule feature, like on your kind of on your send button, right? Yeah. yeah. It's I like that email. It. <laughs> yeah. It's like it, it could bite you, right? <laughs> it's like right there. <laughs> That's like a lot of these features. Okay. Let's go on to the next topic. And then, if you know, if you have other questions about that feature, we're going to talk about it a little bit more anyway. 
All right, so email filing rules. So I use the example of, let's say you have, you know, 10,000 emails in your inbox and it's just kind of cluttered with a lot of stuff like the emails from Starbucks or La Madeleine or Panera Bread or whatever it might be. And let's just say you just, you just know that there's a bunch in there that you don't need. So you can set up an email filing rule that says if the subject of the email contains, say, Starbucks, or in this example, Crossbank, disaster recovery, whatever, then I want that email to go into this folder that I've now specified called temp or spam or, you know, read later, articles to read. The name of the folder can be anything that you want. So remember I mentioned that I have my, you know, half dozen or so folders on the left-hand side of my Outlook because I have automatic rules that send emails automatically into those folders. I don't necessarily take the time to file them myself. I let the system do it. So email filing rules has become a real lifesaver for me because the nature of my business, I'm just talking to people all the time. I get on a lot of people's email distribution lists, but I don't care because I'm going to set up filing rules that send emails that I don't want to read right away into folders that I have specified. So here's one example. This temporary folder here on the left-hand side, this has all the donations that come in just day after day after day after day with our system. And this folder has 26,000 items in it. Doesn't matter to me because I don't look at this every day, but it does have an archive and copies of all the donations that are coming in. But this is all done automatically for me. And so if I don't want to look at this, but every five days, that's what I do. So then what I do after you know five days or whatever it is, I hit shift, I uh, hit shift on the top item, I hit control Q, they're all marked as unread, I'm done monitoring that box. Same thing for my junk folder. So this is all just junk that's come in and I kind of monitor and I'm like, yeah, that, this, uh, yeah, this, all really is junk. I really don't need to read any of this stuff. So I highlight one, I scroll up to the top, hit shift, highlight, oops, yeah, highlight the top one, control Q, and then I do delete these. And now I've gone through my junk email and I'm done. Takes me literally seconds because I've taken the time to make the auto rules that send emails into those uh, respective folders. And so the feature for email rules is up here on the, um, actually, let me do this, is up here on the rules button. And you can go do a couple things. You can create a rule or you can manage rule. I'll show you both of them. So when I hit create rule, then it comes up with this screen where I can say, because I'm literally sitting on an email from run sign up right here, it's saying, it's giving me the automatic option when I get an email from the selected condition. So when I get an email from run sign up, I can literally create the rule about the email that's on the screen. I can say, all right, when I get an email from run sign up, I want you to move those emails from run sign up into my articles to read folder. And then I say, okay. Here's a really nice thing that Outlook does for you. So it says, all right, the rule run signup has been created. Would you like to check this box and run this rule now on messages already in the current folder? So what that means is it's going to do a scan and say, all right, of all these 35 messages, and I know I have 35 because it's listed here, of all these 35 messages, do you want us to run a scan and take all the messages of those 35 and put them into that articles to read folder now? And I say, yeah, sure, because I don't want to go find them all individually. So now I hit OK. And now it took that one email and put it in the articles to read. And I know that because now I only have 34. So where that becomes really useful is let's say you have a thousand items in your inbox and you know there's probably a hundred emails from Starbucks. I'm completely exaggerating. So you do a rule, you're in your inbox of a thousand items and you create a rule that says if it comes from Starbucks, put it in my, you know, temporary, you know, spam folder or whatever you call it. it there were a hundred items. So I run the rule right then and there. Then 
the system is going to take those hundred items in a matter of like less than a second. It'll take all those items and get them out of your inbox, and now you're only left with 900 to manage. So it's a quick, quick way to clean out your inbox. Now, I caution you on this. Don't think that you're going to spend maybe 10 hours in one day and come up with all these rules and do all these tips and tricks. You're not going to do that, okay? You want to, after this webinar, you want to take one rule, create one rule if, if rules, if you see these valuable for you. You create one and you try it out. And then after a day or so, you realize, wow, this is actually pretty good. Then do another one. But don't try and take some crazy amount of time to set all of this up all at once. Because I will show you what my rules look like now. If I go to rules, manage rules, I just have a bunch of rules set up. Okay, I have a lot of rules. But it wasn't that I created them all in one day. This has taken me months, if not years, to build up. And as I get on different distribution lists and then I lose interest in that thing, I have a strategy. I don't unsubscribe from anything because I've heard that when you unsubscribe, then you actually get on more email lists. I don't know if it's true, but it's enough to scare me. I just create rules and put stuff into my temporary boxes. Or let's just say this email from, this is totally not a spam, but let's just say it was. So if this email from Run Houston Race Series was really actually junk, I could just right click and say junk block sender. And then every other email I get from that email address is going to go into my actual junk folder, which is up here. So easy, easy ways to clean out your emails pretty quickly. Never used email rules, Lynn. Okay, this is awesome. Never used it. Yeah, it's it's more than awesome. <laughs> it's a lifesaver. And again, the whole purpose of doing this webinar with you is to show you ways to get stuff out of your inbox if looking at your inbox with a lot of stuff is causing you agony. And it might be. Um, okay. We'll try them, Gail. Great. Uh, this is one of my favorite topics here, and that's email templates and quick steps. So, again, the scenario with email templates is if the nature of your business is one that you are sending the same messages to people over and over again, it's always the, you know, the same thank you message, or it's always, you know, you want thank you messages to have a personal flair, and I get that, but you always have, you know, you're always telling people, yeah, this is the location of the such and such. And so it's just kind of always the same stuff that you're saying. If you are saying the same, Lynn, yippee, I love that. So if you are sending messages of the same flavor over and over and over again, then you want to consider using email templates, in particular, quick steps. So these are, I'm going to show you this screen here in a minute live. It's Six quick steps that I've created because I'm just always doing these things. I'm always needing to confirm meetings with people. I'm always inter doing introductory web calls. I'm always doing uh, new general meetings like, hey, let's meet at the Starbucks or Panera or whatever it is. And you'll see that these quick steps, two of them are emails. You know, it's just like an email from me to Vanessa. But then four of them are meeting requests. Because another nature of my business is I just I meet with people all the time. So I have to make meeting with them really, really quick and the scheduling of the meeting with them really, really quick. So just setting up a meeting request and making sure it's in my calendar and that person's calendar goes far for me. And so I want setting up the meeting to not take a lot of time. So here's over on my Here's over on my inbox. This is where all my quick steps are up here. So let's just say I want to confirm a meeting. So I just, I know I'm meeting with Karen tomorrow or, yeah, tomorrow or the next day. I want to go up here. I hit confirm meeting and I say, Karen, maybe I want to copy my uh, CRM folder. And then I go, okay, hi, Karen. I'm looking forward to meeting tomorrow, and I always put the date in every one of my confirmations because otherwise people get confused at 12 p.m., and then I might say at your office. And then there's some other text in here I really don't need. I hit delete. I hit alt S, and it's out the door. 
And so confirming a meeting becomes really, really fast for me. Another thing is I might want to set up, uh, let's say, a web orientation uh, meeting request. So I come up here and I go, all right, web orientation. It opened on another screen. So I say, all right, I'll do a web orientation with Karen. She's required to be here. I set the date. It's for 11 a.m. And then I take out any information I don't need and then hit Alt S and now it's out the door. And now I have set that meeting up and I've ensured two things, that it's on my calendar and that it's on her calendar. And getting people, you probably have experiences, getting on people's calendar is sometimes hard. And so I, my goal is to make that an easy process for me and for them. So that's one way of using the quick steps. And the way you create the quick steps is literally this button here that says more, which you would never see unless I point out to you, is you click more and then you can create a new step. I'll go in and and manage quick steps just to show you one that I've already, I show you, you know, I already have my six created. So here in the confirm email, I can just click the little edit button here. And then I give the name of the email. This is a new message. It's not a meeting request. And then I can set who it's going to be to, but I'm not going to, I don't do that because these are just confirming meetings. and I don't know who they're going to. But then when I go under options, I can say what the subject of the email is going to be and then what the content of that email is so that that quick step always has the same information in it every time I use it. And so if you're going to create a quick step, just do one. Just just try one quick step. Do not make all six or 12 in one day. You'll overwhelm yourself. Just try one. And the one you know to try is the next time you go in and you find yourself typing the same thing that you might have typed yesterday or three weeks ago, try a quick step and get it working and fall in love with it and then try another one. All right. So let me see. And we're going to go back to templates a little bit more, but I have some questions that have come in. OK, so Vanessa, you had asked three questions back. Okay, I do not use Outlook for work. I use Gmail. Do you know if Gmail has the same features? It does. They work a little differently. Okay, in terms of um, the, it, just the the features are just kind of in different places, but the concepts are all the same. Vanessa and you and I know each other very well, so if you want to go through it, talk more about it, we can definitely do that. Okay, Lynn. This is going to save me a lot of time. I usually go back in an email in my sent folder and copy the verbiage. Yes, Lynn, we want to avoid that. And and look, that is smart. That's at least you're not retyping everything, but it takes you time to now go into your sent items and go, okay, did I send that to Jack or was it to Stephanie or who was that? And then you got to go find it and then you do a copy and then you do a new email and then you paste. It's like, forget it. You, I mean, you could have, written a novel by the time you do all that. So good. I'm glad you see that. Um, and Darla, me too. Yes, got it. Thanks. Okay, great, Vanessa. Okay, so I'm going to teach you another or show you another way that I use templates. And there's actually a third way that's like an even more sophisticated way. We're not getting into that today uh, because I haven't really done it or haven't found a need for it. So here's another way I use templates. So this is a little bit akin to, Lynn, what you said about kind of finding the sent item and what it's kind of, it's, it's like has a little bit of the same flavor, but it's, it's more streamlined. So you'll see over on the left-hand side, I have this draft folder. Well, I set up a subfolder under that, and the way you do that is you literally just right-click and you can create a folder. Okay, it's that easy. So I created a folder called Templates. And in this templates folder, I created more subfolders. And I have a subfolder here called post race event. Our name is Reason to Race. We obviously go to a lot of races. I talk to people who are at these 5Ks. They get interested in our program. They sign up for our mailing list. And then what's really smart to do is to follow up with them afterward to email, hey, thanks for coming by our tent. We're really glad to meet you, all that stuff. So I, we, we attend these, you know, 16, 20 events or whatever it is throughout the year. And year after year, I realized I'm sending the same email to these people. You know, it's March and I sent the same email last March. So why don't I just set up a template, a draft email that has all the right verbiage. All I really have to do is 
change maybe a couple of dates and how much was raised at that event. And I go into this template and let's say I had, I don't know, maybe it's a small event. I had 10 people sign up for my, my, um, my newsletter. And so on Sunday, I want to queue up all these emails to go to these 10 people that signed up. And I'm doing it as a very personal email. It's not like a mass email to everybody. So there's a couple things I do with this. So this is now a draft. And notice I have my little delay delivery up here option. So in the draft, I'll set up the delay delivery to be on, you know, Monday afternoon. I don't want it to go out on Sunday. I want it to go out on Monday afternoon or whatever it is. So I embed a delay delivery in this template. And then I copy my CRM. And so that is baked in to my template. So now I'm going to send out 10 emails. So what I do is I highlight this email, hit the control key, and then I just drag and drop, and you see the plus sign. So one, two, three, four, and I do that 10 times. So now I've put those drafts in my inbox. So now that they're in my inbox, I can sort and have them up here at the top. So then I go, okay, one person was Karen, so I say hello, Karen. Alt S. The next one was Gabrielle's personal email address. I say, you know, hey Gabrielle, great to meet you. Alt S. So I do the second one, Bill, great to meet you, and it's personalized. Send it out. And then I've just now sent out all my emails. I say it was 10, I don't know, I only did three. But now over in my outbook in my outbox, because they all have a delayed delivery, none of them have gone out yet. And they're all going to go out on that Monday afternoon that I specified. And then Lynn is asking me on the uh, chat, what's the purpose of copy copying my CRM? So our uh, CRM, the contact relationship management, I think that's what it's called. Uh, managing all your contacts. So we have I don't know, thousands and thousands of people with whom we've communicated. And so I want to keep a record in that, in that system that other people access. So I have work colleagues that have to go into our CRM to look at the history of what's happened with, say, Karen. So I've emailed Karen a bunch of stuff, and somebody else in my company has emailed Karen a bunch of stuff. But we don't look at each other's emails. But we do both go into the CRM, our contact relationship management system, and we can see everything that happened with Karen. Because there might be five people in my company emailing Karen. And if we all just copy our CRM, we have a running history of everything that happened with Karen all at once, or all in one place. And that's why we do that. Other, any questions about email templates? For, that was a good question, Lynn. Thanks for asking that. It's so that we have a, one repository of everything that we've done with, with particular people. Okay, feedback, comments, questions, email templates. Okay, let me show you another quick way in using the email templates. So let's say I want to go back to that, um, that template and I put it in my inbox and I say, okay, it's fine. I'm going to use this one. And let's just say in this instance, I want to make this just a mass email to everyone. So I'm going to show you a quick little tip with Excel that you might not you might not have ever used. And so let's say I have these 12 people's email addresses. I know these are not real people. This is just a copy of, you know, it's just some kind of fake information here. But if I come here and I right click and I say copy, I now have these email addresses from Excel on my clipboard. And I put them over in, say, the I'm – I'm kind of a big fan on BCC. I don't like to, you know, copy everybody on everybody else's email addresses. So I literally just copy the email addresses, put them in BCC. When I hit Save, Outlook automatically puts all of their – puts a, a semicolon after each name to – or after each email address to – uh, queue this email up out to go. So if you have an, uh, an Excel sheet with a bunch of email addresses, do not, and I repeat, do not just copy each one individually. 
don't copy each one individually and put it into the email. Just do a copy of the whole string of emails and then all S, send it out the door. And then again, because this had a delayed delivery, obviously that email is still in my outbox because it hasn't gone out yet. Okay, other questions about email templates, quick steps, any of that? Okay. All right, we're we have like one minute left, and I'm I can stay on as long as you'd like for questions that you might have, but I do want to hear some feedback. And then I put here my contact information if you do want to contact me directly. And if you like what you saw, uh, and you're on LinkedIn and you want to give me a shout out and maybe do a recommendation and just if you like my delivery, if you like the content, if if you like the interaction or whatever it is that you want to uh, recommend, I really appreciate that. Those seem to go far on LinkedIn, or if you just want to. Email me with any other questions. We can stay in touch. I've, I've been thinking about doing other webinars like this because I just kind of have a lot of information in my brain, so I can share about I can share about Mailchimp or Excel or Word, uh, OneNote, just all kinds of productivity tools. Because um, the nature of our work is to make people better at what they do, so that they can be really good at delivering their work. So um, yeah, and I do want to hear what are you going to take away? What are you what are you going to now use? You can tell us all on chat. So what are, you, what are you going to take away and do uh, as a result of this webinar? So are you going to do the delayed delivery? Are you going to do some email rules? Because one thing to sit here for an hour is another thing to take this information and be productive with it. So we'd love to hear what you're doing. And it is 11 o'clock. Templates, number one. Thank you, Darla. That's great. All right. Well, I'll stay on as long as you need. If you'd like to ask questions, you can take yourself off mute. Um, otherwise, uh, pile alt S. Yes, alt S is a lifesaver completely completely um, all right so Ellen this is especially helpful with small shops with little or admin support yeah the quicker you can get people doing the small things like setting up templates or control N for just creating a new email it saves a lot of time uh, over the long haul and uh, Lynn will give you a shout out and do your recommendation. Oh, great. Wonderful. Wonderful. I really appreciate that. Yeah, so you can find me on LinkedIn and we can connect and yeah, uh, whatever recommendation you can give would be great um, because all I want to do is provide value to our community so you can be faster at the admin stuff and focus on the great work you're doing for others. So follow us on any of our social media handles and it's been great having all of you on. You're very welcome, Lynn. Glad you attended. So, so glad. Oh, great, Cheryl. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Samantha, so you love the rules and delay delivery option. Yeah, Samantha, once you start using them, you're going to find a lot of use for them, if that makes any sense. Because you'll, you'll just start to think about different ways that you can maximize your time. Oh, another, question, another item I didn't even say was uh, sometimes if I'm on a call with a client and we go through and we talk about a fundraiser and we have these great, these 10 great ideas and then the client says, all right, I'm going to meet with my board on Thursday and then I'll say something like maybe it's Monday and I say, hey, do you want me to send you an email reminder on Wednesday with these 10 great points that we talked about? He says, oh yeah, that's great. I get off the phone with him on Monday I create the email right then, and I queue it up to go on Wednesday, because if I do it right then on Monday after he and I talk, then everything's fresh in my brain. Because when I start look at my notes on Wednesday, it's not going to make as much sense. So I queue it up on, on, I write it on Monday, queue it up for Wednesday, and then it goes out on that Wednesday, and he gets it right before his board meeting, which is right on time. All right. Well, y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank you again, and contact me anytime. I'm here available for you.